This movie is uh, showing you one way to get titles into Premiere Pro. Now this is my personal workflow that I really like because I prefer doing my type in Illustrator. But if you like doing your type in Photoshop, you can actually skip this first step. But the point is to be able to create a layered file and then to import it into Premiere. And each layer is then a separate clip. And so if uh, you look at the screen right now, I am an illustrator, and you will notice that my document size is 1920 by 1080. In other words, the same size as our film. Oh. And so that's very important so that when you import this, it will be in the exact size and position in which you created it. So I'm going to go back and get my black arrow tool and uh, let's open up the layers and you can see what this file is. So all told, this file has seven different layers. It has a background layer and then it has three sets of titles, directed, written, and produced by. And of course, each one of those also has a name attached to it. So I just have the top two turned on and you'll notice that these are individual because I want these to come into the screen at different times. All right, so I am just gonna go ahead and turn all of these on. It will look a bit like a mess, but that's okay. I just wanna make sure everything gets exported. Why do I have to export? I don't well, know. Well, it's because Premiere Pro does not allow you to import layered Illustrator files. You can bring in an Illustrator file, but it won't recognize the different layers but fortunately, it will recognize the layers in Photoshop. So in order to facilitate that, I have to export it as a Photoshop file. Now, before we do that, however, note up here in the tab that the color mode is currently set to RGB, and that's exactly what it should be. But if you look at this and you see a CMYK, then you need to change that before you export because Premiere Pro is an RGB program, meaning that it is meant to create media that will be seen on a screen. And so I'm gonna go up to my file menu and if I did need to change it, I would pull down here to document color mode and just choose RGB color. But since it's already set up, we're good. For sure. Uh, but where I really wanna go now is to the export window. And so I'm gonna pull down to export and then export as. This window allows you to define where you're gonna save it to. And down here in the format, you will see that there are many different possibilities and formats that you can save this in. We, however, are gonna go right to Photoshop, choose that, changes the extension, and then click export. And then that will bring up this window and color model is for RGB. Um, resolution is set to screen, 72 pixels per inch. That's exactly what we want. And then this is key. Flat image, you don't want a flat image. That will just you know, get rid of all your layers and make it a single layer. We want to write the layers. And we also want to preserve all the editability we can. So text in particular, I want to be able to edit my text in Photoshop. And then just anything that can stay editable as it was in Illustrator, I would like to maintain. And then these defaults are just, just fine. So I'm going to click OK. And that is it for Illustrator. Here we are in Photoshop. You'll notice that uh, I have the layers window open and it looks very similar to what we had in Illustrator. Although uh, something uh, that happened in the exporting process is that folders were created and the type layer went inside of them. Oh, man. This is not a problem. I'm just gonna twirl each one of these folders closed and I'm just gonna leave those folders exactly the way they are. They're not hurting anything. And now we're back to our original seven layers. Uh, if I turn off most of these layers again, you'll see that I have my directed by and my mannequin. And if I twirl open that folder and double click on the type icon here, you'll see that this is completely editable, just like you'd be able to do with type you created in Photoshop. So that is very nice. Now I almost always open up an exported file from Illustrator in Photoshop just to make sure that everything has come through fine. And it has in this case. The only thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure everything is turned on except for the background layer. We do not need that background layer because Premiere Pro will automatically give us a black background. So just gonna turn that off and do the save and uh, we are done in Photoshop. 
Finally, here we are in Premiere Pro, all ready to import the layered files we worked with in Illustrator and Photoshop. So to do that is quite easy. All I need to do is double click here in the project window and that will allow me to navigate to my file. And that is right there, import. So when this window comes up, whereas before um, in class we just clicked OK, now this time we don't want to do that because we do not want to merge all layers. So I'm going to drop this menu and I'm going to choose individual layers. What's nice about this window is that it allows me to import only the layers I want to import. So if I only wanted this written by layer, I could uncheck everything else and it would only bring in that piece of art. Nice. In this case, I want everything to come in except that background layer, so I'm going to leave that unchecked and then I am going to click OK. It's added and what's nice is Premiere Pro puts it in a folder for me, so I'm going to spin that open and there are each of the different layers that you have seen earlier in the other programs. And so these are now separate video clips that I can just drag into the timeline and I can modify them in any way I want as individual pieces. I've kind of decided that I would like to not have this be bright white. I would like this to be kind of a, a gray, a murky gray. So does that mean I need to go back to Illustrator and then Photoshop? I don't want to know. No, I can actually do this very directly. It's almost like staying in Premiere. So I'm going to right click on the directed by graphic down here. This will drop a menu and the part I want to show you is being chopped off in your screen. But I'm going to pull down all the way to the bottom and I want to choose edit original. Choose that and then that will bring my Photoshop file back up. And so at this point, I'm going to turn on my black background so I can see, turn off the other layers. And then I'm going to double click on this type icon again. And this time I'm just going to go up and change the color right up here at the top. Like I said, I just want kind of a dark murky gray. And that's looking pretty good. Maybe a little more greenish would be good. Oh yeah. Yep, that's as murky as it gets, baby. Oh so I'm going to click OK. That has now been changed. And at this point, I can just turn my layers back on, turn off my background again, save the file. And then when I go back to Premiere, you will notice that this automatically updates. So you have a direct connection between your Premiere profile and in this case, the Photoshop file. And the same thing would be true if it were an Illustrator file. So at this point, I am ready to build my film. I can start dragging my clips in. And because they are separate clips, I can have them come in to play at different times and modify them in different ways. Well, here we are with our finished movie. Let's take a look, shall we? Coming to a theater near you this summer.